today we're gonna talk about money analytics money and i'm going to address the very specific question of how much can i ask for as a business analyst so this is going to be a three-part series where i talk about the different ways that i see as viable for a professional to earn income in the analytics field? Well, I realize that question really depends on a lot of different factors. Years of experience, very specific vertical industry that you're in, level of education. All that being said, I'm gonna talk about my anecdotal experience and the research that I've done over the past year and a half. To quickly introduce myself, my name is John David Arianson. I am an entrepreneur, I teach analytics, and I'm also currently independently consulting as a Tableau developer. The four key details about me that are relevant for this video are that I have an MBA with a concentration in analytics. I'm a Tableau developer. This means that I focus specifically on data visualization. And I focus and have experience in the manufacturing, nonprofit impact analysis, and marketing analytics verticals. Currently, I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. And this is relevant to the video in that once I get into the Harnome Salary Guide walkthrough, I'm going to look up the average household in Greensboro and then compare that against the entry level salary and then senior level, director level, and VP level. So if you're curious about how I made the transition from my MBA student life into work life, I made a video about how I turned my last semester internship into my first consulting client. And you can just click the link up above if you want to go check that out. So the way that I think about the three different verticals for earning an income in this specific field, you can see in the chart that in full-time employment is the most stable, most secure, but the earning potential is lowest. Then moving to independent consulting, you have less security, but more income. And then all the way to the right is building your own agency. And this is by far the riskiest way to earn an income, but with high risk comes high reward. All that being said, I have the least amount of experience, actually I don't have any experience being a full-time employee, but I have developed a relationship with a recruiter at Harnum, which is an analytics recruiting firm, because she is looking to fill a full-time analyst role across different industries within the Southeast. So I know that consulting and having your own agency is very risky. So I've developed this relationship so that if I give up on either consulting or my agency, I have a soft, warm place to land in one of the jobs that she could help me fill. So the 2018 report really just focuses on much higher level statistics. Like you can see, 76% of respondents would move jobs if the right opportunity offered. So these are just kind of the high level uh, data points. And here Harnum is talking about contract work, which is the second part of this three part series. Um, companies are really looking to hire for very specific projects and in general these contractors can ask for a, a higher rate than a full-time employee because they're seen as a investment on a specific project. So if they spend $150,000 and then they get half a million dollars worth of value then it's a win to where if they had to pay $150,000 every year, it starts to um, change their judgment on, on how they see the value. So risk analytics, this isn't really something I focus on, but here are the pay scales for that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, so if you're a risk analyst, you can just pause the video and look at the different um, pay scales there data and technology. So this is where I'm going to pause and talk a little bit about um, where I sit as far as the analytics spectrum. So personally, I'm a Tableau developer, which I've looked at this um, salary guide, and I think that 
data visualization falls underneath business intelligence. But, you know, that's an assumption. And if you feel like I'm wrong about that, please let me know in a comment in the comments down below. I, I would, you know, I'm, I'm all ears here. So a business analyst or a business intelligence analyst makes right around $100,000 starting out. Granted, this is aggregate data. So this is all of the United States kind of rolled up into uh, one specific figure. And then it goes up from not, from 100,000 to 130 to 150 to director level at 182,000. So marketing and insights. This is also something that um, it's a little bit relevant to me in that my consulting firm we do do marketing analytics. You can see that in marketing and insights, it's a significantly lower pay scale. So anywhere between. 55,000 and 75,000 starting out. But it does max out at 230,000 for director of market research. So there's a pretty big range within that specific set of analyst roles. Data science. I'm not personally a data scientist. I don't really know how to code very well. But you can see they start out, computer vision starts out at 130,000. I mean, that's a pretty big salary. So digital analytics. So this isn't as low as marketing analytics, but it's significantly lower than data science and business intelligence. So that's anywhere starting out between 70 and 75,000 and then on up to 185,000. I've been in contact with Harnum for about a year and a half now. Fortunately, I have their 2017 salary guide, and I actually like this one a little bit better in that it goes into a lot more detail about salaries, and I'll show you here in a second. So this, again, is their credit risk. It shows different locations, so you can see you got New York and San Francisco, the big, big tier cities, uh, Chicago, Boston, Texas, D.C., and L.A., so those aren't as high of a paying scale. And then you've got Georgia, Seattle, NC, and St. Louis. So I personally fall within North Carolina as I live in Greensboro, North Carolina. And I just wanted to walk through a specific use case for you know my specific anecdotal experience. So in NC, a business analyst starts out making 61,000 to $82,000 a year. So the average is 64. So I wanted to give some context around what that salary looks like uh, day in and day out. So I went and did a little bit of digging and here is the city of Greensboro's demographic and income comparison profile. So for 2019, the median household income was 64,000. And the average household income was 68,000. So you're starting out at the average, right, right around the average household income. And then you quickly go up from there. A BI developer makes 91,000 to 115,000. So at the top tier of just two to four years in, you're making roughly the double, double of the average household income for where I live, Greensboro, North Carolina. Then you go up from there. So a senior business intelligence, on average, makes well above, you know, two x the average household income. So in my opinion, being a BI developer in one of these smaller tier cities is a pretty big win. I hope this walkthrough was really helpful and informative to you. I've been kind of wrestling with, do I want that security for ever since I started consulting, honestly. If you like this type of video, please like and subscribe or leave a comment. Um, I, I, I want to know if, if this is actually hitting a need.